Selamat pagi. This video uses timing diagrams to review the functions of several combinational circuits. Print the follow along worksheet so you can try the problems yourself. All of these circuits have been discussed in detail in earlier videos, so if you want more information, you can refer back to those videos. First, a quick reminder of how timing diagrams work. This timing diagram is made up of three distinct but related waveforms. Two are inputs, and one is an output. At all times, the output signal is determined by the input signals processed through the given circuit. We are assuming no gate delays here. This example circuit is an AND gate. Therefore, we can see that in time slots where both A and B are high, then U is high. If any one of the inputs is low, then the output is low. There really is nothing new when applying timing diagrams to combinational circuit devices. Step one is to understand the function of a circuit. Step two is to look at each time slot individually. Don't worry about past or future time slots. Step three is to identify the output for those particular inputs. Let's look at this full adder device. We know that its function is to arithmetically add the three input bits and produce a two bit sum. In the first time slot, before any signals change values, the sum is 0 plus 1 plus 0. The 2 bit result is 0, 1. Therefore, the C out bit is 0 and the sum bit is 1. The next time slot shows 1 plus 1 plus 1, which equals binary 1, 1. Therefore, both output bits are high. The next time slot shows 0 plus 1 plus 0, which equals 0, 1. Next, we have 1 plus 1 plus 0, which equals 1, 0. Finally, 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 0, 0. Now the timing diagram is complete. Let me bring in the answers to see how close my scribbles lined up. Not too bad. The next device is a 4-bit inequality comparator. Its function is to determine whether two inputs are equal and, if not, which one is larger, assuming unsigned binary inputs. This one is easier to interpret with a numeric example. Given these values for A and B, which one is larger? We can tell that B is larger by reading left to right. The most significant bits are equal, so keep looking. In the next bit, B is larger, so that makes B larger overall. We don't need to keep looking. So the B is greater than A output signal would be activated, and the other two outputs unactivated. With this in mind, try to complete the timing diagram. Pause the video while you do. In the first time slot, B3 is greater than A3. Therefore, B is the larger number overall. Thus, we make that signal high and leave the others low. In the next time slot, A3 and B3 are equal. A2 and B2 are equal. A1 and B1 are equal. And A0 and B0 are equal. Since all of the bits match up, the numbers are equal overall. So, we activate the A equals B output signal. Continue this process to complete the waveforms. The next device looks exactly the same, except for these little bubbles on the output ports. As a result, the function of the circuit is the same, but now the outputs are active low. So if A and B happen to be equal, then the A equals B port will output zero, and the other inactive ports output 1. With this in mind, try to complete the timing diagram. In the first time slot, B3 is bigger than A3. Therefore, B is the bigger number overall. So, the A is less than B line is active at 0. The others are inactive at 1. 
Continuing this for the other time slots produces these results. I happen to keep the same input waveforms between this and the previous slide. As a result, the output waveforms are just complements of each other, thanks to these little complementing bubbles. Up next is a 4 to 1 MUX. A multiplexer selects one input line to pass its signal through to the output. With four data inputs, two select signals are necessary. Pause the video and try to complete the Y waveform. In the first time slot, the select code is 1, 1. This means that data input 3 is selected. D3 holds a 0. Therefore, that 0 passes through to Y, and all the other D inputs are ignored. In the next time slot, the select code 1, 0 indicates that data input 2 is selected. D2 holds a high value. So, that high value passes through to Y. Continue this for the remainder of the diagram. Now we'll flip things around with a 1 to 4 DMUX. A D multiplexer has one data input line that gets routed to one of multiple possible output lines. The design that we discussed in earlier videos forces non-selected outputs to equal zero. With this in mind, try to complete the timing diagram At the start, the select code 01 indicates that Y1 is the chosen output line. The data input is high, so Y1 receives that high signal. All other non-selected outputs are low. In the next time slot, the select code 00 indicates Y0 is chosen. The data input is high, so Y0 becomes high. All other outputs are low. From this point on, the data in is low. So all of the outputs end up being low. Even though Y2 is selected in the next time slot, the data fed into it is at zero. So it doesn't look like anything changes on that waveform. The last device in this quick review is the four mode shifter discussed a few videos back. Here, the select inputs determine which mode is selected between a shift left, no change, shift right logical, or shift right arithmetic. The given input value for A is held at decimal 12. So let's write its binary code 1100 on the ports. Use this to try to complete the timing diagram. In the first time slot, the select code 1, 1 indicates that the mode is shift right arithmetic. Therefore, A3 becomes Q2, and so Q2 is high. A2 becomes Q1, and so Q1 is high. A1 becomes Q0, and so Q0 is low. A0 becomes the shift out, so SO is low. Finally, what to do about Q3? This is an arithmetic shift, so the leading bit needs to remain the same. Therefore, Q3 is high. In the second time slot, the select code 1, 0 indicates the mode is shift right logical. Everything we said before holds true, so we can extend the previous values. The one exception is Q3. With a logical shift, the leading bit becomes a 0. In the third time slot, the mode is shift left. Therefore, A3 becomes the shift out bit, so SO is high. A2 becomes Q3, so Q3 is high. A1 becomes Q2, so Q2 is low. A0 becomes Q1, so Q1 is low. And finally, Q0 is backfilled with 0. The last time slot is in no change mode, so A3 becomes Q3, A2 becomes Q2, and so on. This device was certainly the most challenging example discussed, but the approach is the same for any of these timing diagrams. The thing you must do is understand the function of a given circuit, 
before you can predict its output values. And that's why these exercises are a useful learning tool.